the beautiful ones are not yet born. This is a lovely novel by, a debut novel by Aikwe Arma. Let's listen about this author. Have you heard his name for the first time? I'm sure no. Okay. The novel is The Beautiful Ones Are Not Yet Born, published in the year 1968. Author is Aikwe Arma, who was born in the year 1939 in Ghana, West Africa. The genre of this novel is post-colonialism, and the setting is 1965 to 1966 in Ghana. Narrator is third person omniscient, who knows everything, who knows what's going inside the protagonist's heart and mind all the time. And the basis of this novel is, in this novel, Aikwe Arma, or only Arma, Arma's novel depicts an independent but morally compromised Ghana. As you know, Ghana attained independence in 1957. But even till 1965, later, there was too much corruption, no power structure, people were just going haywire, nothing was stable, right? So this is what we will come to know in today's novel. Now, first, let's start. Location is a local bus. Inside the bus, the bus conductor, the corrupt bus conductor, wants more than the ticket, you know, money from the passengers. Here, theme is corruption. He fights with the man on the bus. Who is this man? You will come to know. He fights with the man on the bus, thinking that the man is staring at him. But in reality, this man was only sleeping, okay? He orders the man to get out of the bus. The man is the novel's protagonist. Yes, the beautiful ones are not yet born has an unnamed protagonist called as the man. So every time I will say the man, his name is the man. The man works at the railway office and he is morally superior. Financially, he's inferior. You know, life-wise, he's not happy in his family structure, but morally, his principles are way high. Will they be accepted in a corrupt society like Ghana? We will see. Now, this makes him an unfit in post-colonial Ghana's corrupt atmosphere. As the man walks to work, he finds the roads and bins filled with overflowing garbage. So the streets of Ghana are filled with garbage. In fact, from the dust bins, the cans, the trash is flowing out. The following words describe the town. Listen to the words from the novel. A gob of mucus, an ancient state stale smell, a murk yellow color, brown dust, swirling grit, indelic indelible reek of putrid turpentine, victorious filth, overflowing food waste, including juicy, awful, and thoroughly sucked out oranges. Ironically, after all these words, the words on a trash can read, listen to the words, keep your country clean by keeping your city clean. Did you understand? Now a speeding taxi almost hits the man as he rushes by. There are no laws and order here, okay? Location now, the railway office where the man works. The man begins his daily chores like, you know, reading the log from the night, sending and receiving messages from other stations through Morse code. Just then a timber dealer enters. Then the timber dealer is described. He looks very cunning, a sly fox, a wolf-like person. This timber dealer offers a bribe to the man if the man will buy his timber. But the man reject, rejects the idea. He does not want bribe. He does not want money. And listening to this, the wolf-like dealer laughs with disbelief. <laughs> Are you serious? You don't want to take this money? After work, the man goes to meet his old friend from school named Coomson. Please remember this name, Coomson, Coomson. Coomson has recently become a member of the party under the regime of Kumra. Kumra is the first, was the first president of Ghana, okay? So under Kumra's regime, this friend of the man called as Coomson has grown up in power and wealth. He has become a member of the party. He's the elite class of Ghana. The man invites Coomson and his wife Estella home for dinner. Kumsen agrees, okay? So this shifts the scene and we enter the man's house. Let's listen to the man's family life. The man lives with his wife named Oya, Oyo, and children, okay? Remember the name of the wife, Oyo, Oyo, okay? Oyo, so Oyo and children and the man. The family is facing financial difficulties, as I told you, owing to the man's principles, as mentioned by Oyo. 
Now, the man is recalling his day to his wife that this is what happened. The timber dealer came, but then I did not accept the bribe. I met Kumsin. They will come for dinner. Oyo ridicules him because he denied the bribe. Oyo says, how can you do it? We don't have money. You should have accepted the bribe. Oyo yearns for a life like Estella. Who is Estella? Kumsin's wife. Oyo yearns for that life which is defined by lavish luxuries such as jewels, travel, chauffeur, personal driver, etc. At other times, the man is also uh, too much, you know, uh, he's questioned a lot by his mother-in-law. Mother-in-law lives in another house, but mother-in-law also pesters the man with questions like, are your children hungry? Have you fed them well? Why don't your children wear proper shoes? Oh, look at your lifestyle, blah, blah, blah. Disappointed, the man goes out for a walk pondering over the pressure on him by his loved ones and the corruption around him. Walking, he reaches teacher's house. A new character enters here, teacher, teacher. So the man walks to teacher's house. Who is teacher? Teacher is the man's friend and confidant to which we tell our secrets. His experiences, that is teacher's experiences, have given him a keen but very hopeless view of Ghana. Okay, so teacher. Now let's listen to the location. Location is teacher's house. The man and teacher listen to Congo music on the radio. When the man speaks about Oya's, Oyo, Oyo's behavior to the teacher, teacher justifies Oyo's reaction. Since everyone in their country is using any means available to survive and grow, they converse about Ghanaian independence, corruption, loss of hope in their nation. Teacher remembers his friends Manan and Kofi Billy. Manan was a lawyer whom teacher followed in discussions over a drug called we. So they used to have this drug we, who all? Teacher, Manan, Kofi Billy. And they would discuss about world politics and Ghana in a hopeful manner. But nothing changed after independence. In fact, it got towards the worst. However, Kofi Billy, he took his own life because he could not stand the harsh reality of Ghana after independence. No hope was coming. In fact, everywhere there was corruption. Leaders were trying and failing. New leaders were coming. They were trying and failing. The country was just falling into darkness. The man leaves teacher's house. Why? He must prepare for the upcoming dinner for Kumsin and Estella. Oyo tells her husband that she wants to serve the guest the finest European liquor. But the man returns home with local beer. He could not get the liquor, actually. And this angers wife Oyo more. Now, the dinner. It is the dinner time. Dinner at the man's house. Let's see how Kumsin and Estella like this dinner. Oyo and the man try their best to satisfy the upper class taste of Kumsin and Estella, but in vain. Because Estella refuses to drink the beer, it's cheap. The man gets embarrassed when Kumsen sees the community latrine which the man and his family uses because their house does not have an indoor plumbing. Here you should note one thing. Estella, the rich Estella, serves as a foil for poor Oyo in the novel because Estella's glamorous life enhances Oyo's poverty. The man's mother-in-law is also present at the dinner. She, very optimistically, brings up a business idea in front of Kumsen. What is the business idea? She hopes to share ownership of a boat with him. So Kumsen agrees and they decide to meet later for the paperwork. Later, after a few days of this, the man and Oyo, that is husband and wife, they travel to Kumsen's estate. So now the middle class goes to the upper class house. What, what will happen? Tell me. Let's listen. Oyo feels very important and upper class when she mentions the name of the wealthy area to the taxi driver. He tells the taxi driver, take us here. Kumsen's estate. Oh, it has to be rich, which means she feels important. When they enter Kumsen's estate, the two, that is the couple, the man and Oyo, are awestruck looking at the material possessions in the house. Kumsen presents himself as the king of the castle. He brings the papers for the boat, which Oyo signs on behalf of her mother. But note, this, you know, uh, boat scheme does not work out at all. They are only given some fish sometimes that is caught from the boat. There is no profit money-wise, Okay. Now, later, what happens? The man meets teacher again, his friend is co and confidant, and he tells him about Kumsen. What does the man say? Listen, the blinding, gle the blinding gleam of beautiful new houses and the shine of powerful new Mercedes are embodied in the person of Kumsen. But the teacher, teacher is not at all impressed, okay? 
when man says that you know they were classmates who the man and kumson despite of being classmates kumson has risen up he has become the elite of ghana through corrupt means no matter while the man still struggles at his tedious job day and night teacher interrupts and says that there is no difference at all between the white men and their apes are party men so here teacher is accusing or calling the men of the party or the government as apes here the themes of the after effects of colonialism is discussed then again teacher says that the party men mimic the colonizers from the way they speak and dress to their corrupted politics there is something so terrible in watching a black man trying at all points to be the dark ghost of a european basically teacher says that we don't have to inculcate in us the european culture to be successful we have to embrace our culture we have to accept our people if the country has to grow but then the country is not growing it is in darkness in corruption and the teacher is hopeless in fact even the man is hopeless right now a few months later what happens the man is at work he's at the railway office when all of a sudden he hears from you know the people around him these people are called sleepwalkers in the novel he hears about a coup what is a coup when the government's power is seized or taken by control you know by some other people so the man hears at work that a coup has overthrown the kumara regime the government has toppled down the people and sleepwalkers are excited about the coup and the change that will come but the man knows that no change will come so he does not bother himself because he understands that all power structures end up losing power because of corruption quote he feels completely apart from all that was taking place because he was not burdened with any hopes that new things really new things were as yet ready to come out but now what happens listen to you know after this what happens the man hears a knock at his gate knock 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 it is kumson the king of his castle and the member of the party but right now he does not look like a king he looks terrible and desperate why come on kumra's regime has toppled down because the government has been overthrown kumson also the member of the party is overthrown of course yes people are there at his house they want to burn it down bring it down he needs a place to hide and which place has he chosen the man's house kumson hides in the man's bedroom as he is afraid for his life now the man looking at this poor kumson reflects about his change of fortune from power to fear from wealth to uncertainty kumson looms over pathetically right somehow after this you should know the man helps kumson to escape ghana on a boat for the man kumson now represents a man whose individual life has been ruined due to the changes in power structure even when new regimes may not alter the country as a whole but they are ruining the individuals who are at power right and after help, helping kumson get on the boat the man jumps from the boat to swim to the shore and he feels new freedom he feels happy that his discipline somewhere helped him yes he did not give himself to bribes he kept his principles intact he's happy about it right now before proceeding home he even sleeps on the beach now let's listen to he's walking towards home this scene is important and this is the last scene of the novel the man starts walking he reads a phrase displayed on a bus what is the phrase the beautiful ones are not yet born reading this phrase the man feels hopeful he feels that change will come in his country although soon after an optimistic respite the man returns to his hopelessness he walks slowly towards his house and monotony his life and his job so tell me what is aikwe arma in this novel the beautiful ones are not yet born trying to depict what is he trying to depict he is giving us a message that while people hold on to hope and look forward to beauty and progress there are still very difficult obstacles to overcome to achieve progress in a post colonial or recently independent country did you like it i liked it social novel the beautiful ones are not yet born a part of african literature this is hina from team walat hope you loved today's lecture
today's capsule summary. I shall return again with another summary soon. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.